Hey everybody, this is Mandy with Mandy's Adventures. I am so excited about today's adventure. We get to go to Paws Animal Shelter in Chinook, Montana. Come on the adventure with me. Let's go. are entering Paws Animal Shelter in Chinook, Montana. Whoa, hi guys! Look at these guys. It's like the greeting committee. <laughs> Whoa, hello. How are you? Hi. Oh my gosh. Here, let's go on inside. Hello. Greeting, huh? Look, unconditional love, that's for sure. Oh, hi, how is everybody? Oh, hi, it's a camera. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, hello, how are you? Oh, hi. Oh, hi, everybody. Okay, so we'll go ahead and tell everyone's name. Okay, this guy is... That's Rocky. Oh, Rocky. Rocky is about nine years old. We're calling him a pit bull mix, but eh, who cares? <laughs> Brian. Probably a lab of some kind and mixed in there. You never know. Rocky. Baby. Mm, yes. No. Rocky's favorite pastime. There he goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Rocky. Hello. Oh, what love. He lives for that. Yes. This is Barney. Okay. Barney, we're calling a, maybe like a lab Rottweiler or something-ish. Again. Oh, he's here. just gentle. He's just a Barney boy. Barney is uh, roughly three to four years old. Um, that's the best guess our vet could make, considering what his condition was when we got to it. It was hard to tell. So we're calling him between three and four years old. <laughs> Loves everybody, loves kids, loves other dogs, loves everybody. This is Rambo, this is Rocky's counterpart here. Rambo is six years old. Hi Rambo, hello love. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Walter, come on bubby. This is Walter, Walter's about eight months old. Come here, he's the youngest of our crew. You can tell because he's got the most energy. And he's also a lab mix. Loves children. 
in his previous life, he would uh, escape his home and he would go hang out at the schoolyard because he loves kids. He also loves other dogs. <laughs> very playful, very good boy, great on the leash. They're all wonderful on the leash. They love to go for walks. So my name is Alyssa Hewitt. I'm the board president of Paws of Chinook here in Chinook, Montana. I'm also the shelter manager of our Paws of Chinook Animal Shelter here in Chinook. Blaine County Fairgrounds is where we're located. Um, we are open by appointment. Anytime you'd like to come visit the dogs or volunteer or make a donation, uh, you can reach us on Facebook. Our phone number is 357-3316. So uh, one of our volunteers, one of our amazing volunteers can always come down and meet you down here. Uh, if you want to just see what available dogs we have, spend some time with them, um, make a donation, see what we need, see how you can help, that's the way to do it. Very important. But having us here is just as important because they have all that room to run and, and go if they want to, but when they're done, they just need people. They just need that, that time and that, compassion and it doesn't take much. Um, I'll show you this, uh, the boosters, the Chinook 4-H uh, Booster Club made these for us. They're snuffle mats, and so it's just a sink mat here with some leftover fleas. And what you do is you just put some kibble or treats or whatever in there and they have to go find it. Oh, and nice. so it's it's great for puppies because it te teaches them how to start using that nose and it's just great for dogs like Barney who just wants some extra treats um, and it's just such a cheap thing it's just so inexpensive some of the stuff can get oh does that one still have stuff in it? <laughs> like yeah there these. it is <laughs> um, uh, so yeah so they just got together and said well we can do that and they just made us a bunch I mean so that's another way the community just you know they, the community here has kept us alive, literally. I mean, we would not be here without them. Um, and they just keep helping, they, no matter what we ask. You know, when we decided to bring our, our vaccines in-house, we knew they had to be refrigerated. We didn't have a refrigerator, so I went on to Facebook and I said, hey, <laughs> can we maybe get a little few bucks to help? This is how much it costs, and I think it was like under $200. But in 45 minutes, we had that and then some. It gives us the ability to bring those in-house. It saves us money, and we're able to pour everything right back into the dogs. So, um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so we, we've been here a really long time. We have no intention of going anywhere. Um, yeah, in, uh, last year we had our uh, record-breaking in adoptions and spay-neuter assistance. I think over over the year we spent somewhere around thirty thousand oh. on spays and neuters. We do that all year long. We, we we help anybody who needs it. I don't I don't ask for any kind of proof or if you need us to help, that's why we're here. Because we wouldn't be here without you. So if you need our help, yes, let us help. Um, there's a food bank, a dog food bank that helps out shelters. So we were able to score a, a whole pallet of food that we'll be picking up to uh, tomorrow, I think. Um, so that was a really big help because food gets expensive, especially when we have dogs like Barney that need special food for a while. Um, yeah, that food was sixty dollars a bag. Oh that that things add up That's quick. Yeah, all the little. Um, yeah, we were able to purchase a, a washer and dryer because in the in the winter time we do have heated floors here, but in the winter time we do like to give them a little more comfort and warmth, you know. Um, but asking us to bring home these blankets to our own washer dryers are kind of fun. So we were able to purchase a washer and dryer this winter so that we can just do our laundry here and no one's got to bring anything home and we can disinfect things every day. And um, so we really are set up with the, we really are just set up, I mean, so well. Um, we'll be getting another outdoor shed this year to just for extra storage. Um, so we'll be filling that with food hopefully this summer. And uh, we have a spay neuter clinic coming in May that we're very excited about. We do microchip clinics throughout the year um, so that you know people pay 20 bucks. It's low cost for them. It's a good little fundraiser for us. And yeah, they just come in and we microchip, set them on their way. See it here? Yeah. We just do it right here. We bring in a table and um, one of our uh, volunteers works at one of the vet's offices. So him and my husband handle that part of it. They microchip, they're on their way and um, it's just such an important thing. It's so important, especially yeah. when you live in this area yeah. that's 
if your dog runs off, who who knows which which direction you know? And now that it's become such a common thing, all vets offices have a scanner. Most shelters we also have a scanner. Most shelters have a scanner nowadays. Um, there's really no reason not to, and we do it for twenty. We're, we're we kind of that's a, yeah yeah. So it makes us a couple dollars per dog. It lets us get to know our neighbors a little more and their dogs a little more. It lets them see the shelter. That's really important too, because a lot of people were tucked back in here and they I had no idea this place existed, you know. And so it lets them kind of meet us, meet the volunteers, meet the dogs, meet, you know, just hang out at the shelter. It's important that people see us and that know we're still here. The awareness. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Big big deal. And, and people's hearts just, I mean, when I, when I showed, I try not to show any pictures for shock value. Um, the pictures of Barney were very hard to look at. Um, but I think it's important that people see that these things are going, around, going on around us. These are our neighbors. It's um, a reality. And you have to know that this, this stuff is happening. Um, if, we, if you saw a child on that porch in that condition, there's no way you keep driving. Um, dogs, dogs are our military. They're our police force. They find people in avalanches. They they see for our blind. They walk for our. Um, you know, as a diabetic, these dogs let us know. They let us know. Rocky and Rambo's mom who unfortunately is no longer with us was a diabetic and there was multiple times that they let her know if something was wrong they do those things for us and we i do my best and <laughs> we do our absolute best but they do those things for us our children our children we go here dog walk my kid around this busy parking lot and we trust them to do that and we trust them to keep our soldiers safe and they're finding explosions. Are you kidding me? The dog is doing that? Um, the things that dogs can do, it blows me away. So the least I can do, the very least, is make sure that they have this safe spot until we can find a forever something for them. Um, and how could you not? I mean, come on. I mean, come on. <laughs> These boys. <laughs> So we're here for the long haul. Um, we'll keep we'll keep doing what we're doing as long as people keep supporting us. You know, um, I'm pretty active, always looking for new grants and things that we can apply for um, because we we do fall under a good category. So, you know, a lot of grant uh, organizations want to make sure that you are still tutoring. You know, you get any extra brownie points if you are microchipping. Well, we already do all that. We don't do that for the grants. We do that for the safety of the dog. But we already do all that. You know. Um, if people want to make a donation, where can they make a donation to? So they can, um, our PayPal name is Paws of Chinook. Um, if you're local to Chinook, you can always drop off a donation at Shores Floral. Um, that's a, a big one for people. Um, they can also go to our website, which is pawsofchinook.rescuegroups.org. And it has our little PayPal donate button right there. Um, you can always just get a hold of us on Facebook and say, hey, I want to come down and see your outfit and see your dogs and make a donation, and, I, and I'll meet you down here. Um, we're open by appointment only, and, and I try to make that always work for people. So um, donations are always welcome. They keep us alive, and which in turn keeps them alive. So um, that's what we rely on. We don't get county money. We don't get any government funding at all. It's just our neighbors doing supporting us. So... Uh, if you want to volunteer, we're always looking for volunteers. It doesn't take much. Just in, um, There was a recent study that showed how much just 15 minutes of petting a dog at the end of your day for the dog and for you. So it, you don't have to come in here every day. You can come in an hour a month if you want. Um, we don't really ask for any hard things. We, we just want them to be able to get out of their kennels uh, every now and then. So if you want to volunteer, there's also an application on that same website. There's, um, if you need spay and neuter assistance, there's also an application on that for that. Uh, uh, also an application on the website for that. If you need some assistance getting your dog or cat spayed or neutered, uh, we work with some local vets here that, um, that handle that for us. So um, yeah, we're, we're definitely here to give back to the community and not just take. So. 
And how about like supplies if someone wants to donate like blankets, dog food? Any type of dog food, because we rely on donations, we don't use uh, just one kind of dog food. Um, and so when a new donation comes in, we kind of mix it with the existing food. We just keep that mix going so we can prevent some stomach issues um, from that you know, harsh switch from one food to the next. So dog food is always welcome, always. Any kind, we, we don't have a preference. Dog food is always welcome. Blankets, as long as they're not knitted or crocheted, we can always use blankets. Um, we're gonna have a blanket drive this month, actually, for our upcoming uh, spay neuter clinic. We'll need those for recovery, so we'll be doing a blanket drive. Um, yeah. We can always also use cones, because ours don't last very long. <laughs> This one will not be used again once once Walter is done with it. It's just awful. It's you just. But the the alternative and him ripping open a, a wound is so much worse than that. But you just feel terrible because oh my god. Um, so yeah, um, we we can always use um, donations of, of food. Of, um, you know, monetary is great because then we can just do whatever. But if you want to do like gift cards to like Ace Hardware, um, you know, we, we, we use them a lot for things here. Something, um, we're still working on trying to update things. So we, we do have a, a leaky pipe here and there, or a leaky hose every now and again. So gift cards to places like North 40, Ace Hardware, Walmart, Amazon. Um, we try to stay as local as we can. Um, so local businesses are the best things. Um, we, we try to give them our business as much as possible. But um, yeah, any kind of gift cards work. Um, someone actually, I know you, it was you, gave us a gift certificate to the coffee joint over here and that was much appreciated because there's some days when we're, when Betsy was, was pregnant, one of our volunteers was in here at 2 a.m. And then again at like 5 a.m. And then she had to go to work. And she was just, I mean, she was pretty much popping a tent and just sleeping here because we were so worried about Betsy, you know. And so the coffee came in very handy, uh, for sure. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's really just all about, uh, you know, we, we really try to educate the community as, uh, at the same time. Um, try to let them know we understand that you want your dog to have a litter. It's a normal thing and we understand it. But give us five minutes to explain what one litter does, um, what that can turn into. Um, and maybe come and hang out with these dogs instead. <laughs> because these dogs, Rocky and Rambo aren't gonna chew up anything and they won't have an accident in your house. And you know, when I walk, I walk all four of them at once Rocky likes to hang back here with me. Our little short leg gang is back here, you know. And the other three are just, let's go, let's go. And Rocky just, you know, if I have to stop, Rocky just stops and waits, you know. I mean, there's so much to know about these dogs. And, and spending time with them is just such a rewarding thing. You don't have to worry about, well, if I go, I want to take them all home. It really doesn't work that way. And that's probably the biggest question we get here is, how do you spend time with these dogs and not just take them home? How do you leave them there? Well, we do everything we can to make sure they're happy here. Um, they're happy, they're comfortable, they're safe. They run around so much that they're probably wishing we would leave earlier because they're just, they're beat, you know. Um, so. <laughs> the video is just gonna have this crashing noise every three minutes. <laughs> life this is reality it's absolutely life we and they have the freedom look at the freedom that they yes, have they come in and out they, <sighs> we our our shelters have indoor and outdoor kennels so through that guillotine door they have access to inside outside all day long we have heated floors um the beds we that was my first fundraiser when working here because there had been a leak something exploded in the in the pipes and it flooded the drain was clogged and so the dogs were just standing in, in water oh and so that was my first fundraiser was let's make sure we get them some beds so that if that happens again they're up off the ground at least mm -hmm. now luckily because they were heated floors nothing froze so that was thank god for that 
Um, so yeah, they do have freedom. When I'm here in the morning, I let them all out and they just run. They, they come in, they go out, they steal each other's food, they slobber on each other's water. They, they do what dogs do. And that's our big thing is we just let them be dogs. Mm -hmm. We just kick them out and just go, we'll be dogs. We have all these toys, we have an Amazon wish list. And this is just a very small bit because um, there's also Walter likes to steal things and take everything outside. So we also have everything that's outside. We make sure they've always got different toys in their kennels to keep them busy. Um, you know, uh, we have a, a few boxes more in the in the shelter in the sheds. Um, so toys are a big thing because we get to know what they like. Um, you know, we get to know if this dog likes fetch, if this dog just likes to chew, and, and or if this dog likes to tug, or if this dog really doesn't like any of it. Like Rocky. Rocky doesn't like any, he doesn't care about any of this stuff. Rocky wants to sit on your foot and just get a pet. That's it. That's all that dog wants. So it's one more step in getting to learn each dog as an individual dog. Uh, breed, we don't care about breeds ever. Um, not only because half the time we don't know the breeds we're getting because they're so mixed, um, but also because unless you're looking for a small dog or looking for a big dog, breed doesn't matter. Um, every single dog that we bring in is an individual on its own. It's past experiences shape who that is. They're just like people in that way. Um, their past uh, shapes them. Their, where they're going shapes them. And what we learn from them here um, could have a totally nice dog perfectly stable, well-balanced, nice to everybody, but as soon as I pick up that broom, it turns into a different dog. Why? I don't know why. Um, so we have to treat them that way. We have to treat them like the individual that they are. And that goes the same for when we're finding homes. There's no one-size-fit-all home for a dog. Um, we take that dog and we decide what's going to be the best home, what, what is the ideal home for this dog, what does that look like? We get applications, the volunteer team, the whole team looks through those applications to ask questions, see if there's any red flags, see if we need to clarify anything. Um, so it's always about the finding the right home, whatever that means. Um, and that could means different things. That could mean, uh, you know, right now I have four dogs. That's an endless combination of applications that we can get in, that we pour over, that we really scrutinize. Um, after an application is approved, we recommend the trial run, maybe a little sleepover for the weekend, just to make sure, you know, um, that everything is okay. If it is, we sign the adoption fee, we or the adoption application, we collect a hundred dollar fee. That's we keep our fees really low because it doesn't make sense to us to charge six hundred dollars to a, get an adopted dog, even though the money we put into them. Um, by the time we vaccinate. Bay neuter, microchip this dog, we have almost $500 into each dog. And we recoup $100 back. But because we have such an incredible community that wants to see us succeed, that's okay. We're not in this for the money. And anybody that is is doing it wrong. So, you know, um, like dogs like Barney. Barney was seen on a porch. And he was a, a literal skeleton of, of the dog you see right now. Um, really, you could count every single bone in his body. And uh, if any dog wanted to not be nice to humans, this dog would be it. And we would not blame him at all. Um, but we, we brought him to the vet and got him some fluids. We bought him special canned food that was for his sensitive stomach. We fed a quarter of a can four times a day, and then we were able to move to three, a third of a can, and then we moved to half a can, and one whole can, <laughs> and it's taken a long time. Um, he's finally at the point now where he's off special food. He's, he handled neuter surgery just fine, so he was strong enough to do that. We had some blood work done. All of his organs are functioning the way they should. Um, that first night we brought him in and brought him to the vet and they gave him a liter of fluids and it sat on his back like a water balloon because he had shut down so much that his body didn't know what do I do with this and so it just sat there. Um, we brought him in, I called another couple of volunteers to come help. And we put a blanket down, we put a, him in a sweater and we put another blanket because it was mid-December, put another blanket over him, we shut the door and we just sat with him. 
and the recommendation was to put him down. Uh, he said that was the, the humane thing to do, which I, we understand. Sometimes that is the humane thing to do. We agree, but we had to try. Let me try, and, and if in a week this dog is still deteriorating, we'll have that discussion, but let me try. And so we did, and there was so much life in that dog's eyes that there was no way that we could just go, because if he's not done, how are we done? That's all. That's all we ever said about Warren. He was never done. <laughs> and so, obviously, he wasn't done because he's a terrific boy. He, and he's gained such a following. People know Barney. When I bring him out to go walk around town, they know Barney. Um, they've fallen in love with him. And he's just so deserving of every bit of it. So that's just one that's just one case. And luckily not all of our cases are like that. Um, but sometimes, yeah, sometimes they're pretty heartbreaking. Um, but it's our job to get them through that in any means possible. It, it's, it's our job to work with them and get them into the other side. And we, we have great adopters that keep up to date with the dogs that they've adopted. And we just couldn't be more happy about it. I mean, to know that we've made the right decision, to see these dogs just splayed out on a bed, you know, at, at noon in the middle of the day, and they're just, you know, groomed and fed and fat and happy. I mean, oh, guys. <laughs> Rocky's such a king here. He's just, it's like someone should be feeding him grapes. I mean, right. if grapes weren't toxic to dogs, at least, I mean, <laughs> You need a Walter, though, right? Everyone because needs a Walter, this, yeah. this this place would not be what it is if we didn't have a Walter bouncing around, just being ridiculous. You know, it would be pretty boring. And and this is what I'm talking about right here is that you know he had his run, he had his play. He's he's wrestling, he's playing with everybody. And now he'll just he'll see him with Rocky. Yep, that's all. And that's all we want. Huh. Oh, boy. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see from up here The world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me we meant to be In the great outdoors Forever free
like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me We meant to be In the great outdoors Forever free Sitting here, I got time. It's clear to see from up here. The world seems small. We can sit together. It's so beautiful, you and me. Meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free. We all have just, it's, it's a sign of volunteering here when you have a comb bruise on your shin. <laughs> your shins are just, just, there was one point last year that we had 14 dogs in the shelter. It was hard. It was, that was a lot. Um, four of them were spayed and neutered, so they were all four wearing combs. And they were like 40 pound puppies. So they would just come out and we had all of us were just bruised from the knees down because they would just constantly, constantly grab it with that, uh, with the comb. But it's, it keeps them safe because we can't be here to keep an eye on them all the time. So they need to wear them. Yeah. Um, but hopefully it'll heal up soon. I'll take it off and all of our cats will be saved. So. Okay, Alyssa, the ultimate question that I do need to ask you, and I'm sure other people will think, Ah, where is your heart and how do you feel when the animals are adopted and you no longer see them every day and they no longer see you every day? Where is your heart with that? So that is probably the most asked question here is how do you, how do you get so involved in their lives? How do you get to know them so well and then just say goodbye? Um, and yeah, that it's hard. This is not an easy thing. We don't just go, okay, bye, you know, and, and never think about it again. Um, each dog that comes in 
takes a piece of us when they leave. And that's without a doubt. If they're here for a day, if they're here for a month, each dog takes a part of us. Hi, Rambo. <laughs> um, the good part about that is they go off to a new life that we have kind of, uh, you know, we, we scrutinize adoption applications a lot. So we're making sure that they're going to the best life. So they move on to that and then new dogs come in and they kind of fill in those holes that are left when these guys leave us. Um, it, it's a roller coaster every day and it's a heartbreaking gig, it really is. But it's rewarding, it's so worth it. Um, when you can see dogs like Rambo here, who when Rambo first got here with Rocky, some of the volunteers were afraid to open the gates and let them out because he was very nervous. He was very, he was in an unfamiliar place. He didn't know what was going on. There was other dogs here. Um, normal reaction, absolutely normal, but um, the volunteers know that if you're uncomfortable, never open a gate. And so they didn't. And now to see that this dog is perfectly at ease with people coming in, with other dogs. I mean, you can see they're so playful with everybody. Um, I can stand here with you and talk, and he, as you can see, he was just laying right here, perfectly comfortable. We work to get to that point. And so when we get there, that's our goal. Our goal, and, and it's probably the only place that we could ever say that in life. Our goal is to say goodbye to something. How backwards is that? But that's what we're aiming for. As soon as they come in this door, we start the process of saying goodbye to them. Um, and it's not easy, it's never easy, but it's so worth it. Barney, uh, Barney's gonna get to sleep on a couch for the first time in his life. How can I say, oh, but I'm gonna miss him? How can I make that about me? I can't, I can't. Um, we're thrilled for him. It's gonna hurt saying goodbye to him, of course it is. But he gets to just go out of a door at his own leisure and lay in the grass. He gets to lay in the sun on his own terms. He's never, ever, ever had that chance. So how can we say, oh, but it hurts me to say goodbye? How do, how do we do that? We don't. Um, and then we go home and we have a cry about it. And then the next day we get a new dog in and we start all over. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what we do. That's our job. Um, so yeah, it is tough. Uh, a lot of people are afraid to volunteer because they're afraid they won't be able to, to say goodbye. They're afraid that they're gonna come in and adopt all 20 dogs and that's it, you know? It doesn't happen that way. You'd be surprised. Um, it really doesn't happen that way. You get used to it. It becomes part of your day. It becomes part of their day. You see that you're making a difference with them. They're definitely making a difference mm -hmm. with you. Um, so if, you, if you're ever interested in volunteering, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, but trust me, you're not gonna go home with 10 dogs and end up divorced and everything else. That doesn't happen. <laughs> it doesn't happen that way. Um, so yeah, definitely the number one question we're asked is how do you say goodbye? Well, that's what we plan for. Mm -hmm. um, we can't wait to say goodbye to them because that, that means that they're moving on to something better. So. Okay. And if there's one thing you want people to um, know about an animal shelter, what would that be? There's one thing I want people to know about an animal shelter. We try our very best, and we succeed at this, to make this the most comfortable, safe place for them. If you're in a situation where you have this dog and circumstances didn't work out, whatever those circumstances are, we're not here to shame you. We're not here to say, oh, you didn't do your homework, so now you're in trouble. We're here for those dogs. Mm -hmm. So. You don't have to feel bad that you're dropping off this dog. And of course you're gonna feel something, but you don't have to feel bad. You don't have to go, oh, the poor thing. There's no poor thing about these dogs. They are completely spoiled beyond belief. Um, <laughs> they have volunteers who come in throughout the day. I have three to four visits throughout the day, always rotating. So they see people, they see dogs, they're, they're fed. <laughs> you know, um, their water is fresh two times a day. Their, dis their area is disinfected every single day, sometimes more if it needs it. They have a bed. In the winter, they have blankets. They have a heated floor. That's more than my dogs have. So um, you don't have to feel bad about that. Um, if you have to make that decision, we'll help you. 
we can help you make that decision and we'll try our best to make it less painful for you. So that's what I would like people to know. Um, if we can help, we want to help. Well, I tell you, I always tell you, Alyssa, every time I see you are an angel, you really are an angel, but we just cannot see your wings. So right. I, and I know I'm going to talk for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do for these animals. And I love coming here. I love the feeling that that's here and just the animals. I, I, every time I come, you see them smiling with their eyes. Animals do not lie, no. and um, the animals tell you the truth. So right. thank you so much for everything you do. We appreciate all of your support, of course. You guys have been wonderful partners to our shelter. Um, I wouldn't say I'm an angel in, on any level, but if I am, I'm oh. sure that Walter ate my wings, and that's why they're not here. So. <laughs> oh, I love Walter. Oh. All righty, thank all right. you. Yeah, thank you. I want to take this moment to thank Alyssa and her crew at the Poor's Animal Shelter here in Chinook, Montana. Oh, my heart is full. I loved visiting here. I seriously could have stayed here all day. Remember, you can help your local animal shelter too. You can provide blankets, you can pay their vet bill, you can give money to the veterinarian to pay for the spade and neuter clinic, you can buy toys, you can buy dog food, you can send money and if you would like to donate to the Paws Animal Shelter here in Chinook, Montana, I will leave all their information in the description box at the bottom of this video. I'm gonna tell you, Alyssa, she is an angel. You just can't see her wings. Her heart is there. The feeling that she gives out at this animal shelter is you could just feel the love. And the animals just love her. The dogs just love her. You see them smile when they see her and they're always by her. I tell you, it takes a special person, I think, to run an animal shelter and we are truly blessed to have her at this one so until we meet again take care love one another and until our next adventure i'll see you soon bye